Greetings everyone and welcome back to another cheapo phone review. In today's one I'm going to be taking a look at another item bought from AliExpress. This was yet another item that I found on my live stream where you folks generously donated to see this reviewed on the channel and I've received it today and I can't wait to take a look at it because most of you should know now I am a sucker when it comes to miniature tech products and when we found this on stream I've just went oh that's cute I have to have this. So we'll go through the listing as well as some pictures and then I'll show you the actual phone but first before I even continue just let you know that timestamps are in the description below so you can skip to wherever you want to. If you want to skip past the advertising and all that sort of stuff, feel free, that's why they're there. All right, without further ado, I purchased the Uniwa 8XR 2G GSM feature phone 1.77 inch touchscreen mini mobile phone MT6261D 350ml amp supports multiple languages. And this cost me all but $41.81 Australian, I'll just round it up to $42, and I'll display a currency conversion chart on screen so you get an idea of how much this tiny little thing costs around the world. And if you couldn't tell by the photo, it's a tiny little iPhone 10. Regardless, it's some sort of an iPhone 10 clone, except considerably downsized. I chose red because red is the best color, and there is other colors that you can choose, which I'll show very soon within the advertising. Now, I was wondering if I should leave a link to this in the description below. However, because it's a knockoff, I'm kind of a little bit hesitant to do so. But if you want to take a look at this, just feel free to look up this on AliExpress right here, and you'll find the item, providing this turns out to be good and it's worth having a look at. In the description, we get a specification sheet which says this is not a smartphone you can't use whatsapp sorry what app facebook this is a feature phone and it can only use 2g network if you mind please don't buy it and funny enough the seller actually messaged me before setting this out saying this is a 2g phone it will not work in australia but i said that's okay i want it for the whole novelty anyways and they went ahead and sent it the cpu is the mediatek mt 6261d we have 32 megs of ram 32 megabytes of storage 1.77 inch 128 by 160 display only two 2G, no front camera, but we do have a rear camera though. No headphone jack, micro USB, we do have Bluetooth, 350ml amp hour battery, takes one nano SIM card, takes a micro SD card though, doesn't support a torch, the dimensions are also there, the weight of this is only 40 grams because of how tiny it is. The packing list is one body, one battery, one USB line, and the instructions called the instructions, and then the other colorways. And the first picture in the advertising is this mini phone, mini super small, 8XR. And as you can see, someone's holding it with what I think is a wallpaper stolen from the iPhone 10 series next to a credit card to show you how small this thing truly is. The next picture shows that it's a mini phone, multimedia. Also is the font the Terminator font. Maybe I'm mixing it up with another font, but that's what I'm thinking of. It's a multimedia device for kids, supposedly so another device meant for kids. If you want to take a look at the sugar phone that I recently reviewed, I'll have a card pop up at the top right hand corner, so feel free to watch that if you want to, because that's a fairly interesting phone, but this thing's half the price of the sugar A100, and with a lot less features, so we can't expect too much here. The different colours, black, white, gold, and red. Honestly, they all look pretty good, but I like red, so that's why we went with red. A size comparison between the Uniwa 8XR and a lighter, which should be about correct. We'll see very soon. Another comparison with a coin, just showing how small it is. It's very small, yes, but you haven't seen the phone yet. And the last picture is the 8XR mini phone that has multimedia, telephone, SMS, and wireless dialer, and that is completely it. So now let's go ahead and unbox the Uniwa 8XR and take a look at this tiny little miniature feature phone and see what we can do with it. And here's the parcel right here. Uh, it weighs absolutely nothing, but I'm pretty sure there is a 40 gram device in there somewhere. The customs declaration does say it's the Uniwa 8XR, XR, so we shouldn't have any issues unlike the iPhone 14 Pro Max thing that I recently reviewed that I got from AliExpress and got scammed over. I'm filming this right after I filmed that video, so I haven't got a refund as of yet, but I will let everyone know if I do. Also, this took about three weeks to receive from China to Australia, so not too bad. Cracking this open, let's have a look at what this thing is. This will probably be like the servo phones that I've had a look at, most likely. Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, shiny, shimmery box right here. Look at the holographic material going on there. That's actually quite trippy and psychedelic. It's kind of like the back of a Note 10 Plus, but it's the mini phone, mini super small. Connect to your smartphone and answer the phone book Bluetooth. Music can be synchronized. Okay. Mini phone, to make or receive a call of your mobile phone via wireless, to send and receive SMS of your mobile phone via wireless, to synchronize SMS list, call record phone book of your mobile phone via wireless, to be used as a standalone mobile phone when you insert a SIM card. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Media, telephone and SMS. And whole bunch of them there, some certifications made in China, mini phone there, mini phone there. Let's have a look at the front of it. <laughs> it 
It's so adorable. It's got a 10S Max wallpaper there. It also has fingerprint. Wireless call the voice call. The best and smallest backup phone in the world with wireless dialer there. It also has 8XR something or other 7361448. So that means something to me. Let's crack this open. Let's have a look at this thing. Oh, this is so cool. All right. So we get some instructions in here, which is, oh, it's in English. Mobile phone manual, let's see. Because of the product version to upgrade or other reasons, the document contact will not regular updates. Our company reserves in do not make any prior notice in this manual revision content of rights. Okay, I'm severely confused, but all right, sure thing. Keypad description, there is no keypad, what do I do? I'll just display this on screen right here. Feel free to pause the video and read this if you want to. If you find anything funny, feel free to let me know because there's also an armentarium. A successfully connected dialer and after successful connection has permission to arm Armamentarium. Armamentarium. That's a thing. Okay. Well, the instructions were very helpful. 10 out of 10 for them. We get a micro USB cable that is very, very short and I probably won't ever use. We get a... <laughs> it's, a little... it's a little case that has Avengers on it and Spider-Man's behind it. Okay, this phone has won me over already. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh my god, and this is the thing here. Look at it. It's so small. That's what she said. It's called Tinstar. The seller actually did send me a message and say, we have updated the product design and it looks like this now. We have the iPhone 10 camera layout there with the 0.8 megapixel camera there and a dud one and no flash. So I can't do much in the camera department. Taking the back plastic off. There we go. Get a better look at the vibrant red of this thing. It actually doesn't look too bad, to be honest. For a very cheapo device anyways, it's got a nice colorway to it. And obviously an icon's supposed to be where the Apple icon is, which is a, a slug with some lines around it, I guess. That's the best way I can describe it. At the top of the plastic frame, we don't have anything. At the side of the plastic frame, we don't have anything. At the bottom of the plastic frame, that's a nice metallic red. We do have the micro USB port as well as some speaker grills. On the other side, we just have the power button. Button. And the front of the phone, just taking a closer look, yeah, it's got the notch, like the iPhone 10 introduced, but if I take the screen protector off, you can actually see where the real screen is, and this is all just a decoration. Much like the Excel's devices that I've had a look at, they had a fake notch, and then the actual screen was just sort of under it. It's actually been featured on a few welcome devices that I've had a look at. That's a whole 1.77 inch of screen right there. Just as a curiosity, here's a Nokia 7370 from like 2005. It has a bigger screen than this, and probably can do a lot more than this, and also can do that. I don't know which one I like better. This is red, this wins. Oh God. Taking the back cover off, <laughs> oh God. We have a tiny itty bitty little battery in here, which is about the size of a stick of gum if I'm being fair. It is a lithium ion battery with 600 milliamp hours. It was supposed to be 350 milliamp hours. Well, anyways, that's a Nokia BR5C 1100 milliamp hour battery next to this, if that gives you a bit of an idea. Also, it's the size of a BR5C to be honest, pretty close. And there is the mini phone 8XR with the IMEI. Feel free to tell me where that's from. We've also got a serial number that seems to be unique, but these devices do have unique serial numbers anyway because these aren't really welcome devices. I mean, this could be a welcome. Probably is. Micro SD card slot and a micro SIM. And because this is 2G, I'm not going to get too far with phone calls since we don't have 2G here in Australia, like the seller warned me. But I'll just put one in it just in case. Put my 16 gig micro SD card in. Also, the paint just goes around the frame like that. Just spray painting it on casually. Oh, there's stuff on the back of the battery. Here we go. Use only original batteries and charger. Do not disassemble or short circuit the battery. It must be recycled or disposed properly. It may explode if damaged and fired. This is the same battery from the server isn't it? Also, it's just a sticker that they've put on there very poorly. This is not dodgy at all. Completely fine. Look, the hologram proves it. See? The hologram seal of approval. God, it's like trying to assemble a box of Tic Tacs. How do you even? And of course, this wouldn't be an actual video without comparing the real iPhone 10 to this little guy here. It's absolutely adorable. Thickness-wise, that is a good indication. It's probably two iPhone 10 stacked together. And the front looks a little something like this. At least the notches are fairly close. I'll give them that. It's kind of like an iPhone SE with the home button, but it's just that they've thrown a notch on there and some bezels. It's now time to power on the Uniwa 8XR and test this thing out. How useful is this thing going to be? Probably not very useful, but we'll give it a go. On we go. Is it a welcome? It's a welcome! <laughs> 
That was a horrible boot up sound. I'm pretty sure I've actually heard that before somewhere, but I don't know where from. It's going to search, no service, because we don't have 2G. The display looks a little something like this. If you pause the video right now, you can count each individual pixel if you wanted to. It's a low resolution display. You can't do too much on a tiny little thing like this. At this point in time, this would be the smallest Volcom device I've ever had a look at. I've looked at so many of them, I just don't even remember at this point in time. But anyways, let's try and navigate this thing. We don't have any volume buttons either. So if I touch and hold, I can't do anything. Can I swipe down? Nope. So I can't do anything here, but I can go menu. Oh, there we go. Okay. We've got messaging, call logs, Bluetooth, Bluetooth dialer, Bluetooth notifications, remote control. Let's swipe along. ANSI loss, settings, quick risp, alarm, find me, like real me, but find me. Calendar, image viewer, video player, Bluetooth music, sound recorder, camera, file manager, reminder, sleep monitor, and profiles. Oh God, there's going to be ringtones on here. And then this goes back. Well, camera's right here. So do you think we should get the camera test done first? I reckon we should. Let's open up the camera. Oh boy. Oh, does it even see the mouse mat? Yes, it can. I just can't see. You just... Yes, just yes. Okay, options, camera settings, anti-flicker, screen mode, white balance. Okay, image settings, image size is 128 by 160. Okay, can we bump that up? Or we can to 320 by 240. Oh, not bad. Image quality, I guess we'll go good. Save. Wait a second, there's no video recorder on this? Wait, 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 wait. There has to be a video recorder. No, there's no option for videos. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, I might be able to do videos with this then. Let me go ahead and take some test photos with the Uniwa 8XR and we will be right back. All right, I haven't done the camera test as of yet, but I can only imagine what the pictures are going to look like from a phone this small. Oh, there's an always on display too. It says it's Tuesday. That's wrong. I'm hoping that I do find the video recorder in here somewhere, but I have a feeling I'm not going to find it. Let's go straight to settings here. So phone settings, we have the time, date, language, backlight mode, flight mode, and LCD backlight. Don't have to change much here. Profiles. Oh boy, the ringtones. It should be the generic MediaTek ones, but we'll see. I have no way to change the volume. It's the generic MediaTek ones. Oh, there's only five of them. Let's try ringtone five. Okay, well, that's not that exciting then. Security settings, SIM security and phone security. Network settings, can't do much there. Connectivity, data accounts. I was gonna say, where's Bluetooth? But Bluetooth's in the actual menu itself. And restore settings. That's all that's in settings. Not too much. Let's pair this to my iPhone XS Max. Can you believe I've had this XS Max for almost two years now and I haven't even copied my entire music collection to this device as of yet? I'm very lazy. I will one day, I hope. Let's go Bluetooth setup. Power on Bluetooth. Yep, switch that on. All right, let's see if it comes up. Name is Q9. Okay. Oh, it needs an app to connect. But shouldn't it just still come up within Bluetooth settings though? I'm trying to find the thing and it's not finding the thing. There's a QR code. Quick response is a QR code. Let me just try this. Aha, just redirected to another website. That's fine. It only works on Android. I'm using a Fold 2 5G at the moment that I got from Cash Converters for 150 bucks. The reason why it's 150 bucks is because the internal screen doesn't work, but that's fine. I use this as a wallet. I can put cards in here like so and there you go. See? Perfect. 
No idea how this happened, but it appears that there's some sort of debris under the screen that has cracked it, but at least I can still use the cover display. And my S21 Ultra is currently out of action because the latest update killed my cellular on it, so it doesn't even connect to 4G half the time. But anyways, this is working fine, so while using the app, uh, I guess we don't allow, don't allow, 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 allow. Okay, we're good. Also, it's iWatch, like iWatch something not an iWatch. Let me just go ahead and put it in its tiny little case. There we go. Now it's adorable. <laughs> it's Spider-Man now for sure. Okay, so we're looking for a watch. I'm searching for Bluetooth and it's not coming up with this. Let me try another app real quickly. I am trying to pair this and it won't pair. It's not actually finding the device at all. And that was both with the iPhone and the Fold 2. I got it, I have it connected. I've got all my notifications on my Fold 2. Looking for a watch. Oh, watch has been found. Well, at least if you lose it, you can find it. And does that mean that I can find my phone? There we go. And there's the notifications that pop up as well. So let's leave my fold over to the side and come back to our little friend. So if I go to messaging and go inbox, I can actually see my messages on here from Australia Post. So that's cool. I can reply to the message like this. How do you even do this? Okay. All right, so it's like T9 again. Oh. I thought it was a resistive touchscreen. It's capacitive, which means how the hell, okay. Hell, oh, oh God, okay, I can do this. This is fine, oh boy. Yeah, it'd be just easier if you kind of use your own device instead of relying on this to type a message. I can't even type in hello. Oh, hang on, I might be able to type in hell. Perfect. And then you can go that down and put that back up and you can change it all and put numbers and do a little smiley face. Can we put a smiley face in there? And there we go, put a smiley face, a winky face. There, there you go. That was painful, but all right, I did it. it. Does show my call history as well. Not that you can see it because I've had to blow the numbers out, but it does show it. Bluetooth dialer doesn't appear to work because if I go to it, it just shows my connected device and I can't go any further. Nope, I'm connected again, but I can't appear to dial numbers through this. Bluetooth notifications just shows my recent notifications, which is right here. Remote capture oh yep okay so if I move that around you can see the absolute frames a second that <laughs> is being transmitted via Bluetooth to this and I suppose if I just want to take a photo with my fold 2 and just use this I can go ta-da it worked I look a little bit stretched just a little tiny bit. The main thing is it works, but I just don't know how useful that would be. But anyways, anti-lost. If you lose it, it will yell at you. That's fair. Settings we've been through, quick response is the whole application thing. Alarm, do you want this thing yelling at you to wake you up or would you rather your own phone to wake you up? It's up to you. I know people like having companion devices like this so they can just pull this out instead of their actual phone to quickly do some stuff on, but I just find that you're not gonna be able to do terribly much with this rather than an actual, f that's why you have an actual device. It's okay, I've just bought this for the whole novelty. Calendar looks like a calendar, the generic MediaTek calendar that really doesn't do terribly much, but hey, it works and I can go in there and now I can set a date. No, I can't do that. All right, no worries. Does it show my images from my phone or images that I've taken with this? That would be images that I've taken with this. I thought I could view images from my fold on this, but no, I cannot. That's interesting. All right. Audio player. Disconnect Bluetooth music. Well, I suppose we're going to do that. BFG division on this tiny little device. Which one is the speaker? Is it that? Or is it? Okay, we'll just try. Oh, it's up the top there. Okay. Oh, I can skip along. All right.
I think it got to about 100 points something on there. It's not very loud, it's not very clear, but I assume that the size of the speaker is going to be about that big. So it performs better than the Susan M5 speaker, that's for sure. For a $40 tiny little itty bitty phone, I guess it's completely fine. Which we're still not done with music yet because if I go to Bluetooth music and I connect to that and it says not provided, it's still connected, so can't get song. I've put BFG Division on there as well, but it, it can't find it. The application that I've had to download on the phone probably barely works, so that's probably why I'm having some issues here. Moving on, sound recorder. Here is the microphone test of the Uniwa 8XR mini tiny phone thing. This is the microphone quality wherever the microphone would be. Here is the microphone test of the Uniwa 8XR mini tiny phone thing. This is the microphone quality wherever the microphone would be. It doesn't sound half bad. If you were going to use this as a companion to your actual phone, at least the microphone sounds clear enough. All right, well, moving on. Camera we've been through and still no way to do video, unfortunately. I thought there would have been at least a video mode on here. It probably is capable, but they just haven't implemented it. File manager, I can't even view the contents of the device itself. I've only got just the memory card. Also, there was no way to change the wallpaper on this either. Uh, reminder to remind you to get up when you're sitting down. Uh, sleep mode, if you wanted to strap this to your wrist with some duct tape and use it as a sleeping thing that'd be good and profiles is just profiles i'll just double check to see if there's any other ones in here nope that's it i can't even play a video on this that's unfortunate that's basically everything that i can do with this i can't do a browser test i can't connect it via cellular there's no wi-fi or anything like that it is just a very basic mobile phone in a very tiny package with a cute case and a cute little design. That's the whole point of this thing. I don't see the point of this being a companion device when you could just easily use your main device instead of this little thing, but it's cute and it is cool and it's practically useless, but it's still cool though. You folks donated to see this. Well, here it is. I am presenting you the Uniwa 8XR. Is it worth purchasing? If you like small miniature devices that you'd like to just stuff around with, then yeah, it's great with a tiny little touch screen and stuff. And if you do happen to want to use this as a companion, then I suppose those options could be helpful, but there's not much else you can do. If you put music on the memory card and connect some Bluetooth earphones up to this, you could use this as an MP3 player, but there's MP3 players out there with headphone jacks for about 30 bucks that are cheapo like this. So the market for something like this is just very limited apart from it being solely a novelty. And that is pretty much all this is, a novelty. But at least I got to show you the photos from this in a very short camera test. I can't dump the system files. I can't do anything. I did connect it to my PC to see if I get access to the internal storage and nope, I couldn't. So that's pretty much it, folks. I'm going to power this off. We'll quickly tear it down and see what's inside of this and call this one a video I think. Wasn't that interesting but at least you got to see and hear me react to the tiny little thing. Ah, it's adorable. And now it's a goodbye. Bye bye friend. Rest, rest well. The vibration motor worked for the first time. But anyways, let's disassemble the Tic Tac. I can't get my micro SD card out. That's okay. I got a way of getting it out. All right, well, I'll just take out these few screws that hold it together and we'll get a look inside of this thing. It appears that only three screws hold it together. How the hell do you take this Tic Tac apart? Uh, how? How do you even? I'm getting there. I've almost got it apart. Okay, got it. How does this happen? Why? How? Give me back my thumb, thank you. There is the MediaTek processor right there. MT6261DA. We've also got a chip there, which I'm not entirely sure what that is. Probably a power IC, most likely. Or well, maybe that's a power IC. We've also got the loudspeaker there, which is actually a decently sized one. It is about the same size as a normal speaker on a welcome device. We also do have the rear camera just there. It says Q9 here, which is what came up in Bluetooth. We do have two flex cables for, I would say, one for the display and one for the touch. I can't get any further than this because everything's soldered down there. There is a code on the motherboard there, some test points, the little tiny microphone's just there as well. That's as far as I can go without breaking everything, so I'll just put that back down into place. It's kind of a bit of a 
clusterfuck with everything going on there, but I'll just stick everything back down and pretend that's completely fine. All the specifications do check out with this, so I really don't have to display a true spec list, but I will just quickly see if this thing does still work. So I'll just hold the battery there and just power it on. It should be fine. It should still work. Oh, yep, there we go. Yep, perfect. And touch still works? Yep, touch still works perfectly. I didn't kill it. Well, I killed it by dropping the battery out. That's okay. Well, folks, that's everything that I wanted to have a look at on this tiny little iPhone X clone thing from AliExpress. For 40 bucks, it was a fun little novelty to look at, but after this review, I don't have much use for it other than to put it in my collection as a look how cute this thing is, which I've already said a billion times. Even though I didn't test too many features, I hope you did enjoy this video. And let me know your thoughts about companion devices. I mean, I know that smartwatches are quite helpful, but for an actual separate device like this that you'd have to put in your pocket as well, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe 10 years ago it would have been cool, but now it just seems kind of irrelevant. Anyways, if you had to use the timestamps to skip through the video, that's completely fine. That's why they're there. This video shouldn't have gone too long anyways, because there wasn't too much to test on it. It's just me rambling about a tiny little device. I'm waiting for two more items on AliExpress, and then that's it for the AliExpress lot that you folks generously donated towards. So stay tuned for that next video. But otherwise, until then everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And as always, Take care, stay safe, and be good people, and I will see you all in the next video looking at something cheap, most likely. Cheap stuff equals cheapo entertainment. Until then, take care, I'll see you next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.